it's like people thinking that the elderly you know these people who go and kill hobos like people who are um uh, on the street homeless because they feel as if though there's nothing for you to live for anyway and you're part of the, so the society's problems literally you don't get to do that there was actually a story recently in the media that did its rounds where this one elderly um homeless man was basically burned burned not so much to death he didn't die he went to the hospital but then he died there so i guess he was burned to death and some people might be tempted to be like he was homeless and old anyway but like goodness gracious if god has not given up on a person you don't get to do that the, that kind of mindset that somebody is they're over if something is over for them they've reached the very end of themselves that mindset is what causes people to go and torch elderly homeless men because they feel first of all you've lived your full life and lastly you are also on the street and you're contributing to socioeconomic condition um challenges of the country you, we can do without you that that belief that you can do without someone because they're old is disgusting and god has will have nothing to do with it and we are hypocrites when when we're young and we look at the elderly and we let them die in retirement homes without visiting them um it is the kind of hypocrisy that dwells for instance i felt it it punched me in the face so people in this world don't value um uh people when they get to a certain age i'm a woman and i'm 38 okay i'm turning 38 in a couple of days um and I've been feeling like, and I'm not yet married. I don't have yet children. And I've been waiting on the Lord for all that kind of stuff. And I have been feeling like, Father, goodness, I've got a geriatric womb. Uh, basically, it's over. I'm no longer as young as I used to be, blah, blah, blah. Who's going to want me? Who's going to want me? And with me thinking these things, of course, I know that God has not written me off. And on top of that, Sarah was able to have an, a child at a very old age. And the Lord does not work that way. God does not think the way that the world thinks. But I got dissed. I got I got hurt when I was watching something on YouTube where there was this talk show. And there was a 50-something-year-old woman and a woman in her 30s and another the one that looked like she could be in her late 20s and they were discussing with some other guy there was also a man in the room and they were discussing when up to which age a woman is valuable like that those are conversations being had by the world and this one woman this one um lady rocked up and said to the two women that were having a discussion trying to like ping pong with each other negotiate whether or not they're still valuable in their late 30s and the one woman was in her 50s um this this chick walked up and said right you're in denial you're thinking like a woman everything after the age of 35 uh, uh from the age of 35 everything is worthless to a man all the things that a man values basically start to fade at 35 because the things that men value fade from the age of 35 of a woman men value fertility she said and then she also said that men men value youth and men value uh femininity and by 35 going upwards femininity erodes so too does youth and so too does fertility and i'm sitting at 38 and she stabbed me with so many shards i went into her comments the comment section of that particular podcast and there was a woman there that um, did a comment that uh, like made me feel better her comment was thank god the lord does not look at me this way and i was therefore restored because i was sorrowful i went into the comment section and of course as i was reading it was worldly women and men commenting so they did not bring a biblical vantage point to this and only one person was in christ and her comment made me feel better uh but there was a man who commented there that just like literally put a nail in my coffin and he said women over the age of 35 are like the car i just recently bought it's 35 years old and as i look at it it's pretty but it's falling apart you know i i i, I read that and i was like I, you know my heart guys my heart i was like father i'm useless now i'm 38 who's gonna want me I, i've got a geriatric womb i no longer have my youth and on top of that i am kind of androgynous i am kind of masculine because of the way that i've been so badly treated i've had to man up a lot and and so basically all the things that men value in a woman i i have they are, they are literally dwindling down an exponentially declining graph so basically i've been written off as a 38 year old woman by the majority of the world as still viable to marry as still worthwhile to meet a really great man as still worthwhile to have hope and a future a desire for a marriage a beautiful wedding day that is going to be enviable i all the desires i have i can dream on about it so i felt the pain of the 50 something year old woman in that audience and the woman that was in her i believe early 30s headed for 35 um and feeling and with there being no near um hint in sight of a man coming and how it is that you feel as though you're running out of time 35 is so young and then i thought about sarah and how it is that she even in the in her 50s was no she was in her 60s when pharaoh basically stole her from moses because she was still so beautiful and i was like she was like literally three decades older than what is apparently the age of expiry of a woman according to modern standards and yet she got stolen by abimelech and pharaoh like literally at two times in her life did sarah experience this um where another man wanted to steal her basically from her like you know husband of course it was abraham's fault because he denied that she was his wife um um and said that it was a sister but i, I realized that the bible 
Bible makes it clear that God is the one that opens wombs. So a geriatric womb is not geriatric according to God. He opened Rachel's wombs later on in womb uh, later on in life. Hannah's womb later on in life. There are so many um, uh, speaks uh, what is the sto stories of that nature in the scriptures. So God does not write off as the world writes off. But I felt massacred, macheted, cut into a million pieces by that podcast because I'm a 38 year old woman. So I got written off despite there being still a lot to look forward to. It crushed me so badly that I felt like it's over. There's nothing to look forward to anymore until a Christian woman came and gave me counsel, advice. Like she soothed my soul with her comment. And her soul was also uh, clearly her comment was soothing to so very many other people because underneath that one comment was so many uh, comments to her comment. So other people were like, thank you that somebody's coming with this kind of vantage point. Because guys, like the majority, not the majority, maybe like quite a, hu a huge percentage of the human race is over 35 and a lot of them are women for us to believe that it's over goodness gracious in this world where people are getting married later on in life and they are because of the the way society is and also due to the fact that there is an increase in lawlessness and so the kind of quality of man that is required to marry a woman successfully where there is trust in the equation is, is decreasing because of the the times that we're in people are with greater moral tur turpitude so it is more difficult to accept a marriage proposal in the 21st century because of how many red flags there are and men and women basically that are, are, are to enter into this marriage so people make last minute, minute decisions to decide not to go through with the marriage and given that we're in this era when you get to 35 as a woman must you then just feel like it's over because i re i got engaged twice and both guys showed me such big red flags that i rejected them was i supposed to then settle with those guys i personally come from a fiance that had so many red flags that i disregarded um but god rescued me from that and it happened recently so must i then regret not groveling at that guy's feet no he was all wrong for me yeah but the world writes you off so god basically reminded me of that on some kind of remember that conversation about 35 upwards women being worthless you are basically doing that with your dad he is headed for 70 or he is exactly 70 and remember there was a day when i came and i was sitting there um on the stairs in the garden next to the sliding door talking about how i basically i gave a whole like life synopsis a story about my dad and who it is that he has been to me and all the mistakes he's made in life how he and my mom both contributed participated in the mutiny against my life and now that he is dying he expects me to basically cater to his needs that there was a day when i went to go and see him and he didn't even talk to me and i made a decision that it is scriptural for me to not even try and see him again or have his back or talk to him again or hear what he has to say because let the dead bury their dead but as for you follow me and i used that scripture um to justify walking away except that guy was turning back to go and bury a dead man already like was his dad had already died my dad has not died so i tried to make that scripture apply uh to my particular situation because i was harboring lots of resentment lots of um anger and on top of that i'm under so much attack right now from all different kinds of witchcraft slapping my life because of ridiculous people and it has caused me to in this war that i am in think i'm too busy to be focusing on that man like christ deals with spiritual war on the daily his servants he is ever charging angels concerning us and yet he is never too busy for the very old elderly christian that is busy dying and needs angels at his bedside he is not too busy for the brand spanking new baby that is being born that has got an umbilical cord tied around its neck like basically people that they that the world sometimes feels just let them go because they're not even fully alive yet like the baby or they're about to die like the elderly man the lord is is particular for each one of those two extremes worth of people including everybody else that is in the middle but we go and make decisions that god must have been done with that come on it's already over until a person breathes their final last we don't have a right as as anyone here on earth especially as christians to say i've tried we we, we have to keep on forgiving especially if they show signs of contriteness the lord does say dust your feet off if they persecute you in one town but he also says you must forgive 70 times seven times he says that if somebody does come back to you and appears to be wanting to apologize then you need to give them another chance the day when i did go see my dad and he didn't even talk to me at the end of that um day uh, at the end of that meeting uh he was like Rabo, when are you gonna come see me yourself so he spoke only to my mom and her friend and treated me like i was a child that was tagging along with mommy uh but at the end he was he, he changed his mind about basically ignoring me. and i it's despite that like i've been trying to brush that off despite that i was like i i'm tired i'm exhausted on top of that i've got all these people hurting me i've got all the spiritual war that i'm walking in i've got youtube to do i've got to go and give the gospel i have got to go and basically deal with people i need to deal with i'm dusting my feet off you don't get to dust your feet off from a town that it is like hey 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 jesus jesus um who okay look i'm sorry i didn't hear you what what did you say again like if a person does that god says that if anybody comes to me i will likewise not turn away so if for instance bethsaida and chorazan where god says woe to you bethsaida and chorazan it'll be uh, a better day on the day of judgment
Robert for Solomon Gomorrah and for Sidon and Tyler and it will be for you because you heard the gospel and rejected it. If Bethsaida, while Christ is saying woe to them, are like, whoa, 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 okay, 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 look, okay, no, don't go, don't go, don't go. What did you say was the way to life again? Please, I need to hear it. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I was like initially kind of nasty. But please tell me again, God will never turn that away. So as human beings, we don't get to turn that away. Just like that's a very worldly way of responding. We don't get to when then people are ones um, that we're dusting our feet off from. When during our dusting our feet off, they're like, okay, wait, stop. I'm sorry. God says we have a responsibility to forgive them 70 times, 7 times. The Bible also says that um, if anybody knows what is right to do in their heart and they don't do it, the very same person sins. So, and also if at all you know, if somebody asks you for something, that's another scripture. If somebody asks you for something and it is in your power to give it to them you must give it to them and if you don't you sin so my dad did ask me to see him and he did ask to talk to me and i told myself that it's over literally i have done to him what is currently being attempted against my own life as a 38 year old woman the world is trying to write me off as girl you'll never get married girl you'll never ever have those children you've got a geriatric woman on top of that all the things that a man values are gone you're no longer that fertile you're no longer that young and you're also no longer that feminine yeah like all that stuff like basically i've been written off and i decided to go and do what it is that has been done to me but to my dad for different reasons the law says judge not lest ye be judged i judged my dad i basically said it's over for you when god has not yet done that so last time i was um at my dad's place he was busy talking about how he likely might even go for chemo or something he still had hope that he's gonna live but apparently he now has gone to his family in Hilbron, which is like another province of this country um it's far away where he, where he was where he was born basically uh to die it, it's so shocking to me that he has gone there because last time i checked he still wanted to get treatment he has accepted that he's dying he's no longer fighting and it guys you know when they say something landed in your heart with a thud that news landed in my heart with a thud last time he came my, my older sister went to go collect him from where he was at and he was here and on that day i was so under attack that i didn't want to see anybody and i told my mom i don't want to see him he was right here in the car they were headed to my sister's place and he was sitting in the car waiting for them to go to my sister's place they had come back to drop my mom off because my mom had gone over to my sister's to meet my sister and to pick up my dad and i I didn't even want to see my dad has broken me on top of that um i am literally the only saved person in his environment he has been living with um a lukewarm christianity pretty much all his life and he has been encircled by lukewarm christians and i was the first real sound person to come into his life i try to warn him that you're not really saved get your life all together you are not bearing the fruit of the holy spirit i have been for years trying to work on my dad you know guys false preachers are so gonna hurt heaven hey this country is so riddled at teeming at the folds with false preachers that men like my dad despite reading the bible all their lives don't even even know that they're lost he was a flagrant alcoholic irresponsible dad bore no fruit at all of the holy spirit so basically my dad is facing the risk of eternal condemnation and i have yet to confirm if now that he's on his deathbed he's actually truly repented one of my ex's brothers passed away outside of christ he had a deathbed he, it was cancer that killed him and at the time i wasn't saved and he went entered into eternity without the lord because he had a preacher at his bedside that did not give him the gospel he just basically confirmed that he was safe and he was going to heaven when this man was dying he saw ancestors come in to collect him and he left with we all know that ancestral worship is a demonic thing so basically he was deceived by the devil to give up on life and go into eternity without christ when i think about that story it's creepy it, it, it brings hairs to a stand on my body and it gives me goosebumps because now i know the gospel now i know the truth and now i know that he prematurely got taken into eternity the devil was in a rush because anybody at all could have rocked up that was sound and given them a gospel he would have been saved and he would have still died he was heavily terminal he was very late in his stage but he would have gone home to jesus instead the devil worked fast and furious to take him to hell fast before a sound disciple would come through it didn't even have to be a preacher it could have been one of his former friends that repented and decided to go and see him just before he died i didn't know jesus so his blood is on my hand right but god showed me the death of my ex's brother as being the death of my dad that there is a rush in the cosmos to send him into eternity and it is because he is yet to actually truly give his life over to the lord my dad is always reading the bible he is always in the scriptures he is always because i kid you not like this man has he's so studied in the scriptures that he even has an afrikaans bible in this country if you know afrikaans as a black person you've arrived do you understand it's mostly for white people are the ones that mostly speak afrikaans my dad has highlighted an afrikaans bible he's been reading the scriptures all his life and according to the scriptures a person like that um it has got more fire coming to his feet do you understand i also had a vision while i was yeah last night i got attacked yes what guys by by god not even the devil i had a vision of my dad slipping like he was standing on some kind of an island in hell and he kept on like and it was the, the stone was getting like um kind of slippery almost like there was grease or oil on it and he kept on like slipping in and moving like you know when you're trapped in the center of an island and around you the body of water is actually fire as opposed to water it was like that and he was on an island and he was slipping in and he kept on slipping in and then i had another one where i saw 
saw my dad lying in bed and fire was like here up to his feet like flames were like boo, 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 up to his feet i prayed for him to re get redeemed and uh, turn his life over to the lord and god was basically telling me god it's not enough you know what your country is like your dad has been irresponsible all his life his soul now however his heart now is contrite he has been softened the the ground in him has been tilled in that now he is more happy or ready to listen to you in a way that he wasn't earlier when he was in the pink of health he was irresponsible before with embracing me but he's like that seder that you dusted your feet off from and as you were leaving because now you are tired he was like whoa, 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 whoa what did you say again what did you say what did you say and he has also been asking me to give him some kind of sign or a, uh, a hint if at all he's cool in me and you are that sign you are to tell him he mustn't give up first of all he has basically gone to his like motherland or what do you call it homeland where he's from go Mahaeng. he's gone back to helbron to die and he's been giving people instructions as to what he wants when he dies where to be buried blah 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 he is concerned he doesn't want to be buried in his hometown he wants to be buried in johannesburg and for me it's you know a person is not saved in christ when they have got all different kinds of instructions as to how they want their funeral to go believers in the lord jesus christ know that their bodies are dust they don't care where they die they don't care whether it's at sea they don't care if their bodies get burnt at the stake and no one even collects their cadaver to bury it because we understand that the body this dust ain't jack because our spirit is going to go and be with god so a person that is uncertain about that is going to be overly concerned about funeral arrangements i don't care where i die or even if my body gets found or discovered i just care that i'm in christ because i'm not i promise you i will not be concerned where my body is as soon as i get out of my soul we know that the the, the, the bodies the dead in christ are going to rise first and who we who are alive and remain are going to be caught up in the sky to join the lord and meet the lord in the air during the rapture so wherever your body is at god's gonna bring it it's written as well uh the the the, the, the in, in revelation i believed um 20 there where they do the great white throne judgment that the dead um in the sea gave up the dead in it death and hades gave up the dead in it you know what i mean so basically your, your bodies wherever they are you could have died in the wild being decapitated by animals and your skull be all over the show or in one of those like horrible car accidents where they can't even find your hand because it landed in like the river like there by the bridge on the highway or in a bush but your hand is going to be found again you're going to be reassembled when you understand the bible that way and you believe you know that it doesn't matter how you die or what happens with your body afterwards what cemetery you're buried in before i came to christ i was so concerned I, I, the way i hate cemeteries and the way they're so ghoulish and eerie to me i was like i don't want to be buried in a cemetery and missed other like spoon, skulls bones i want to be cremated and do what you want with my ashes but i don't want to be in a cemetery that i said that why because i was scared of basically being a ghost walking among the dead at a cemetery because i did not know what happens after death i was so scared of just being amidst a whole bunch of bones at a cemetery that i even told my mom should i die before you please get me cremated uh when i came to christ i didn't care you can take me to a cemetery bury me black culture has these things that they do where they bury people on top of each other because they're one family bury me on top of my grandmother i don't care bury me at avalon or west park cemetery never find my body literally i don't care because as soon as i exit this body i go to heaven and god is going to rise it from the ground and i will meet him in the air with all the saints that are alive at the time of the rapture um and so i'm not concerned i'm not worried and it's going to be an incorruptible body no hal. my father is so overly concerned about sem like funeral arrangements he is basically telling everybody please 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 don't i don't want he he has such a comfort in Joburg that he doesn't want to basically rest what he calls rest in hellbron no you're not resting in hellbron you're resting in an eternal space you're not gonna care where your cemetery is so get with christ that where you die won't matter the fact that he's worried about that those are all the things that god is bringing to me that this man doesn't truly have peace he doesn't have have confirmation that he's okay also uh people who die in christ um terminal illnesses like you've got time to die type thing they are at such peace guys they have, they have so much peace like it doesn't matter when they go to them it's like i'm just waiting to be with the lord they are so comfortable my father is uneasy my um mom on the phone when she was speaking with somebody told me that my older sister was concerned that my dad doesn't even want to eat. it's like he's given up he has given up and being the only christian in his life and the only person that's ever really shown him the love of god i am someone that he feels very sorry doesn't even want to talk to him at the end i mean the last of mercy the lack of care in my heart i might not be actively putting a knife in my dad's heart but i am spiritually killing him i felt last night like i've committed murder i felt like i took my dad to the grave early and i also had a, a dream like two days or three days ago where i was in heaven basically after my own departure from the earth and I, I, as soon as i arrived in heaven i was like this because god had told me that i had done something that displeased him there is this belief that when people get to heaven 
they are just at peace happy with no regret or sorrow there will be a time of no regret or sorrow after i believe the great white throne judgment but i do believe that every christian that dies now the lord shows them this is where you messed up dude and frankly i wasn't happy and so they spend heaven from that time going forward up until the very end of the ages where god is going to take our pain away uh they spend it knowing that they they messed up i also had a dream because i've been begging for my dad's soul and i had a dream after begging for his soul especially last night where he did make it to heaven but he, when he got there he was sad all the time and i was like why is he sad and and the Lord was like, because he will have been made to understand that it was because of his deeds that your, your brother died and that your brother did not enter heaven. So he's going to spend all the time basically in the run up to the second coming, uh, you know, because in heaven, saints are busy guys. They're working towards the second coming. They're walking. They are working towards um, the end of the ages. Like we're going to come back with Jesus. We're, 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 we're working. We're also going to come back on this earth and populate it in the millennium and reign with Christ for 1000 years. Um, and in the run up to that, there's a job to do. Also, the saints under the altar that were martyred were crying uh, to the Lord, basically saying uh, when are we going to get justice meaning that there is sorrow in heaven that there are people who are crying that there is a sense of indignation inside christians who get martyred and the people on the earth that kill them don't yet uh, have not yet been brought to book there is still pain in heaven or, or sorrow or some kind of regret by christians who get there even though there's no sin even though uh, in the same way that god can feel sorrow and cry over the human race's sins there is sorrow that dwells among angels there is sorrow that dwells among um the the, the dead in christ who are in heaven angels like literally before god finally once and for all fixes the pain in our hearts because he's going to erase it and he's going you know uh, after the beamer seat of jesus christ he's then only going to take our pain away before then christians in heaven have memory of what happened on earth they're every so often disquieted they have a lot of peace in it yes they have a lot more tranquility and a lot more rest than what it is that they can gain on earth but they do still think about what they did what happened and they also do feel indignation about injustice like if they were killed and you know the way that they died was just so and like there's still no justice to this day because they have access to what's going on on earth they get to see what's happening down below we know that this is true because of what happens in revelation we're going to watch the tribulation happen from heaven this is scriptural and so when the lord showed me my dad being sad in heaven he he showed me not only be, it was because of him contributing to my brother's eternal demise but also to my sorrow and the fact that in the run-up to the end of his life i was not talking to him and that caused me to sin and god says that if anybody causes a, a disciple of his to sin it'll be better for them to have a millstone tied around their neck and for them to be thrown into the ocean my dad would have escaped that by simply repenting but he will have participated in my sin and how it is that he will have been made to be privy even after dying to the fact that i ended up feeling so sorrowful and so guilty for not seeing him in the run-up too and that he would have been responsible partially for make for getting me to that point he would have gotten me to a point where i sinned against god by sinning against him so the lord has shown me garabo seize yourself from having regret when you get to heaven concerning how you dealt with your dad and also relieve your dad of too much regret when he gets to heaven concerning you reconcile with him while he's on earth so he can have something to look forward to something to be happy about and on top of that i don't desire for your father to die now i don't want him to die now he has basically put himself in a hospice and i know there is hope for him he has gone back home to die i want him to come back to Joburg. i want him to have hope and belief that he's going to be okay i want him to continue to get treatment i want him to go for that chemotherapy and he's not going to go for it if you don't contact him you are my only child in that environment you are the only really truly saved person in his life everybody else professes christianity just like your country's always teaching the gospel but doesn't really know me um everybody else has their lips praise me but their hearts are far from me your your nation is riddled teeming at the folds with unborn again people that are calling themselves christian so they don't know how to truly comfort a person that is dying they don't know how to evangelize a person that is dying and they also don't know how to ask the right kinds of questions to a dying person to see if they're saved and they also um don't have the spirit that i have put in you they don't have the holy spirit meaning they don't have power in the environment that they go to to cause demons to scatter they don't pray prayers that get hurt their prayers are an abomination to me so basically your father is encircled by satan worshipers if you want to call it that that think they're saved and what that is going to mean is that there's actually no real true help there is a sense of despair he is being hovered around him by um devils of death demons of death and they want to take you so quickly before he truly repents he keeps on praying to me but he has not really actually let go of his sin he has not yet admitted what he's done to me he hasn't come to co apart from confession and remission of sins repentance and confession there is no remission of sins so my dad has, has has not fully confessed to god and has not truly repented during his whole situation with cancer now he has still been drinking my dad is an alcoholic he like literally did not drop the bottle like there is no he, he feels as if though he's okay because of this bad gospel that's been taught in this country that you can continue to live a life in sin and still enter into heaven and so far as you keep on saying this in his prayer so he keeps on saying god please let me into heaven let me into heaven but he has not really had that peace that transcends all understanding he's never been truly 
saved and the lord has shown me that if i contact him he will feel first of all like he lives because he's been asking god about me on some god i'm sorry bring her along give me a sign give me a sign and i am the sign and i've been refusing so what did god do he butchered me last night i could not rest i kept on getting all those visions one after the other and i was so convicted that i literally bothered my mom while she was sleeping at 12 at night on some can i call can i call him can i call him i want to know what's going on we weren't able to get through um i told my mom it's because god has shown me he's in trouble my mom in and of herself just needs to get evangelized whatever right uh didn't get get through my mom is busy fighting that's the thing like the people in this world just keep on being at war with each other they're ridiculous and she's fighting with her sister with my dad's his sister about my dad's funeral arrangements and what to do with my dad like the world is already talking about him like he's gone so he has no motivation at all to like carry on they're warring with each other over his funeral and god was like i don't even want him to die not yet so basically i need to call my dad and encourage him and in encouraging him he's going to stand up and walk and eat and he's going to seek treatment for his sickness and he is going to miraculously recover and his family members are going to be like and here it is that we thought he was dead he's basically gone back home he's living with his sister in Hilbron, and everybody is waiting for him to die. and the lord has been telling me you need to stop it so i am here as somebody who is repenting from the last message that i spoke i will put it in the hovering above here the no the, the, that particular date when i did that work i will put it above here somewhere um so you can go and listen to me that day when i was speaking and how justified it is and according to the standards of this world my whole argument was so convicting and so convincing but according to god it wasn't his will i had written off a person that was not to be written off and i tried to use the bible to justify it. the lord has shown me that it would have made me so severely guilty that i would have basically spent the rest of my life regretting it i have yet to live i've yet to spend my life i've yet to go and have babies and you know um get married i have yet to do what i need to do even though i'm already 38 and god has shown me that this was going to put a stain in the rest of my life so now i know what i need to do. i need to get inside that bathtub and get scrubbed so i can be acceptable and appropriate in god's presence uh to walk around heaven the kingdom of heaven is already here and i was walking around all muddy and the lord called me for a bath and i was like Ugh. but now i know i need to go for that bath i felt last night for the first time in my life like i've committed murder i felt like i knew what it was like to have blood it felt like i'd have really killed so now i'm gonna i wasn't able still to i still have not contacted him because he doesn't have a phone and the only person that has it is his sister and his sister has a job during the day so i can only talk to him now um and i'm gonna try and encourage him i'm gonna try and see if i can't talk to him once every single day or every second day to get him up and running i'm not gonna tell him that god told me he wants you to live i'm just going to encourage him apparently just talking to him is going to reprieve him enough for him to stand up and get up and eat basically like elijah get up and eat for your journey is still too great get up and eat for your journey is still too great get up and eat there are seven thousand others that have not knelt to bail my dad missed out on his call he missed out on the work that he was supposed to do for jesus he did so many random things and he messed up so much but god apparently still has a job for a man i don't know i don't even know how old my dad is like he was an absent dad i don't have much information on him but he messed up his calling but god can still call you at 70 that god can still call you on your deathbed with cancer that is apparently at stage four or five or ten or 29 god can still call you god can do a miracle god can heal god can in the last five days of your life make out of you the most prolific gospel servant that ever existed the lord has no interest that i should have this kind of separation from my dad this kind of bitterness at the end of my dad's life i'm blessed to have both parents still alive at my age most of my friends have lost one parent especially on their father's side and these are girls women that um whose dads were around my father wasn't around so i remember just even going to the lord and being like father how in the world do you keep my parents alive for so long but they're worthless they're useless they, they do nothing but just shatter me they've broken both me and my sisters you know um why why is it under heaven that i've got these longevous parents and yet they are so useless to me how you know why did i not why did my mom and dad not be like you know when you are like 50 and your mom is still alive type thing like god has blessed me with that or at least it appears but they are not worth my while so it turns out that sometimes the lord has not so much set apart parents to rescue children or raise children but children are raised up in order to rescue parents or raise parents from being children so i have a job to do on my dad and i'm convicted and i came here to talk about it so, so that you two who are sitting in a position of anger as a christian against people that you have been evangelizing for years and they have gotten nowhere you've gotten nowhere with them uh understand that insofar as there are any inklings any signs of their turning around we don't have the liberty or the luxury to walk away any anyway. we can't stick to our guns of anger as christians yes the law says that dust your feet off and he also says that do not cast your pearls to the pigs but how do you know if you're casting your pearls to the pig it's if you that no matter how much you keep throwing the gospel in their general direction they keep hurting you dust your feet off on that day
I do. But any kind of sign of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, wait, what, what did you say? Any kind of that, 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 that means that as a Christian, you now have a burden. The ball is now in your court and you don't get to not bounce it. You don't get to not throw, serve the tennis ball. You literally do not get to write a person off that God has not written off. Anybody that appears to want to do a 180, that appears to want to have a metanoic experience, you don't get to disregard them because there is a 16 year old that you feel has 50 more years to live that you want to pay attention to. You don't get to say, I got the world to go reach. I ain't got time for you. You've wasted 10 years of my life. If they come around and say, okay, I know I've done that, but like, what did you say? You gotta give them time. So uh, because of how it is that the moral turpitude of society is increasing at the rate that is increasing, I am here to encourage Christians to not allow themselves to be taken by the tsunami of judgment over people that have persistently over sometimes decades in our lives rejected the gospel we have so lovingly tried to give them. We don't get to write them off if God has not written them off. And how you know that God has not written them off is in the way that he will literally cause you unrest until you do what is right um i felt terrible and i hope to feel better by the end of today um yeah so i have a job i have a mission and i hope i've inspired you i hope i've motivated you and i hope i've caused some of you to repent from whatever it is that you might have made as a decision to walk away from a person we don't get to door slam people as christians we don't get to respond to hurt to heartbreak the way the world does we we can't cut people if we try you know this world is like cut off the toxic cut off the narcissistic in your life cut them off their toxic they're unhealthy for you that's worldly advice that's psychology couch type advice that is shrink that went to go study um clinical psychology at university that's not minister that is not the kind of teachings you would gain at seminary if you are a student of bible um a bible study student you you don't get to apply psychological wisdom to a spiritual situation psychology is man's crutch that reject god it's it's man's coping mechanism when the sinfulness of the human race causes hurt in other members of the human race it is a crutch we have got a, a god who keeps us buoyant in bodies of water that are supposed to drown us because he is the creator of the universe society has crutches they walk on stilts trying to be elevated above the 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 massive the 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 the, 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 the what is this? The malady. They have got fake power. They cope. They deal. They patch it. That's why you find people that have gone to therapy for years, guys. Years. And still, there's nothing that has improved in them or they're worse off than they were when they started. Like, you, you've heard of people like those. I've been going ever since my divorce when I was 27. I've been seeing my therapist for 10 years. It's taken 10 years of therapy to overcome. I dare you to go and ask anybody who's been newly saved, born again, and ask if at all they have not conquered some of the most prolific, monolithic heartbreaks that they have endured up until that point literally overnight like that people who have conquered drug addictions like that overnight cold turkey cold my dad has a drug addiction uh not what is this a, a substance abuse he's an alcoholic and what he needs is true redemption the reason he hasn't been able to conquer the alcoholism is because he has never really been truly saved there are people who have the holy spirit walk into their lives and they quit drug habits that they have been unable to drop for years they've been in and out of rehab in and out of rehab and then they get born again and just like that so we should not be sitting on shrink couches for 10 years and still come out more messed up than we were at first we should be sitting at the heavenly uh doctor's office and once we get seen by the heavenly physician come out looking right as rain pink as of health doing greater works um than the ones that we did prior uh, sorry uh when the lord was was walking this earth so um because of the failure rate of psychology to actually really truly heal people we need to then go and grab those same people sitting on shrink couches and lead them to jesus because christ has power to help them shatter and conquer pain of childhood guys pain of childhood I've got pain of childhood, look at me, but there is a maturity that I am walking in right now in dealing with the man that broke me. Instead of imagining him toxic and cutting him off, I am listening to the Holy Spirit of the living God and I'm going to go and literally snatch my dad out from the flames of hell and likely also potentially save his life. Make sure that 2022 is not his death year, but maybe 2027, 8, 9, however many years it is that God will give him. Another thing when you give a person a shot that apparently has been um, finished off is that if at all they have messed up their lives, like my dad is in his senile years, he's old geriatric years um it's apparently clear that he will never ever build for himself a great mansion in heaven with these works that he will not gain basically all those rewards that you gain with every day you give the, uh, the gospel every work that you do for christ gets rewarded in heaven he has messed up his shots at doing so so a person who dies on his deathbed is one who enters heaven by the skin of their teeth they don't work in the kingdom of heaven a lot and so they don't gather for themselves rewards in heaven so if you can rescue a person from um 
for wasting their years and only repenting on their deathbed, you should do so. Especially because in the years that they're in Christ and working for Jesus are the years that they're gathering for themselves treasure in heaven where moth and rust does not destroy. My father currently has like a mud hut tantamount in heaven because of how much he's messed up if at all he does repent because he will enter heaven by the skin of his teeth. But if I prosper to help him and he lives another two years, three years, he will gather for himself additional treasure in heaven and so have a lot more eternal joy than what he will get from repenting on his deathbed. We need to work on people so they can also gain like physical rewards in heaven because eternal life is guaranteed but you don't want to go to heaven and have just the bare minimum, you know what I mean? So that's why we have to work for souls, okay? So let me go in the house now and call my dad and I'll give you feedback tomorrow or whenever it is that I decide to come back here and chat again um because I'm so backlogged that I'm trying to skip days of working just so I can catch up uh and yeah well I'll let you guys know how it went I love you in Christ's name Cran K repent guys repent do not act like the world in dealing with spiritual situations bye